Welcome, folks. I am Jabby Kawai, joined by Achara Kirk. What's up? And we are watching The Raid. This has been a long time coming. I've been wanting Achara to watch this for a while. And recently on Twitter, it was announced that uh, Gareth Evans is doing a film with Tom Hardy. Wow. And so I was like, okay, we're doing this now. <laughs> I don't know what's coming. I know it's going to be cool. And so we, I got to get you prepped for whatever that is by watching The Raid and The Raid 2. Now, okay. uh, this is the unrated version, which means I guess it's a little longer than the theatrical cut. And the Blu-ray that I have has two different versions, one with the original sound track and the original uh, Indonesian dialogue, and then a dub version, and then the Mike Shinoda music score. And so we are electing to watch the Indonesian track with the original music track. Yes, um, Bahasa Indonesia. Yeah. If you want to do a watch along with us, that's going to be available on patreon.com slash Uh If you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see a cut down version of this reaction here. You're not going to get the whole thing. You'll get the best parts, I guess. It's like a highlights of our reaction to this film. And uh, this was uh, strongly recommended by my brother, Greg Alba from The Real Rejects. He's like, oh yeah, definitely have a char watch this. <laughs> I've never seen this movie. Right, exactly. So I've seen this film. Uh, just for some, this is a little bit more preamble, I'm sorry. Uh, I watched this film a while back. I've only seen it the one time. And I remember a lot of uh, excitement around this film. And I watched it and I appreciated the craftsmanship that went into this movie, but I didn't love it as much as everybody else. And so it's been years since I've watched the film. I want to watch it again to see if I come away with a different opinion now that a lot of time has elapsed. So for me, this is a fresh take in a way because it's been so long. Uh, maybe I was a bit of a curmudgeon when I watched it the first time. That's not surprising. So we'll see how I feel. But uh, just know in advance, like, if you don't agree with my opinions because you think the movie is the most amazing thing and I'm like a jerk, don't take it too seriously. It's just one dude's opinion and Achara was probably going to love this. So very <laughs> much looking forward to it. And here we go. Ooh. The sound on that was really good. Who? Are you like trying not to talk through this? He seemed very uh, you focused. You can do whatever you want. I'm just okay. em engrossed in the movie. <laughs> okay. Oh god. Tono. Oh god. I don't know what's worse. It's gonna be way worse, isn't it? Oh god. Ay, ay, ay. Focus them the thing. They Dang, that. that's a sinister looking building right there. Yeah. That looks like the most dismal council house block you've ever seen in the world. Oh my god, could you imagine? Yeah. Just trying to get home. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I remember uh, this first act being very strong. Uh, this is even better than I remember it. Well, I'm I'm liking a lot of the stuff that I'm seeing so far, like just in terms of story and character. Yeah. Ow. Oh man. So nope, everyone nope. here is basically a low-life scum, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just a, kind of a slum is the thing. That guy did not have a gator back on. He just took that fall. Yeah. We be hardcore in Asia. Ew. Ugh. Ugh. Nasty. You don't hear his feet? They're, like their feet pitter-pattering? That's Four a great cut. Yeah, that's cool. I wonder if that was done practically or in post. Oh. That's just a kid. Jangan tolong, Dek. Diam di tempat kamu. Uh -huh. Do you trust the kid? Sekarang. Oh no. <laughs> Screwed now. <gasps> oh, dang. Is it, is it, they're gonna, 
They'll kill you. It's a wrap now. Yep. Ugh. I hate when when people use kids to do their dirty work like that. It's like a horror movie. Yeah. Well, even just the way the building looks, it like yeah. so dilapidated and it's just not a nice place. He's already got his oh. eye on everything. He's like, I knew that. I feel like time is like a big theme in this film so far. <laughs> Oh, is this from next door? Or... The neighbors. Yeah. Got snipers now. Dang, this is not a good situation. Why? Uh, it elicits fear. Get away from the windows! <gasps> Told you! There's a freaking sniper! Why are we... Uh, get away, dude. I mean, I would... I don't know. Oh! 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 Okay, you saw his... He shot on the head, dude. I'm sorry. I, I mean... It's traumatic, I know, but... Come on. Yeah, pay attention. Oh, shit! Does he look scared, or he's just like, whatevs, I got you. Dude! Drive? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think they got him. Yeah. Dude! Are bullets that cheap? Well, the guys outside were shot. I know, but like, did they take the radio and then knock them down? Yeah, see, they're all dead. That's why they're not responding. Why? Why? You brought them all to be killed, didn't you? Oh, shit. What? I don't see anything. Oh. Well, the conceit is that they're all in the dark. Yeah. But if you look long enough, you'll start being able to, like... Yeah, but all the flashes is going to be like a scene at an equilibrium. <laughs> oh. I, they just lit you up like Christmas. They're like, all right, let's go. Oh god, it's a massacre! Dang! He's so, like, just so calm and collected about this whole thing. Well, clearly, Lieutenant's got, a, like, a personal vendetta with Big Bad Boss. Oh, who's coming? Ooh! Nice. Okay, take him out. Take him out. Well, he didn't do anything. I yet. know, no. I'm, I'm not saying I'm like. Kill them all. I'm not <laughs> saying to kill them all. Just, shoot just like you know, you gotta, you gotta. Who's got the bombs? Neutralize the threat. You gotta lock him up and like put him in a cupboard or C4. something. C4. We need C4. Let's just like knock him out. Is this a good place That's, to be holed up? That's some dope ass shots in this movie. I know. Oh damn. Yeah, windows it's are very, not safe. It's very uh, John Woo with the the gun straight at the camera. How? Oh, he knows a thing or two. Cause he grew up, he grew up in the hood. That's what. He's like, I know how this works. Nice. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was wondering. I was like, they have guns too. What? Ooh. <gasps> oh. Wow, what a shot. What a shot. I don't remember that. 
I don't. It just went straight through the floor. Yeah. It went with him. I was just like too caught up in in like what's actually happening to appreciate that. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah. Oh, that'll require some stitches. Ah! Oh, jeez. Okay. I think you got him. Yeah. <laughs> don't just stand. They have guns. Like you're gonna get shot, dude. Move. I don't know, man. <sighs> oh, nice. Get away from the window. Okay. Oh, that's smart. <gasps> oh god. Oh god. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Is it just his ear? Yeah, it's a flesh wound, dude. Man up. I know it hurts. You're gonna be fine. You're not gonna be fine. Oh, okay. That's nice. Okay. I don't remember what happened. All right, let's light this shit up. Let's go. Oh god, dude. Just Okay. Smart. Okay. Apa ani? Jelas info dengan siapa kita berhadapan. Berapa, Pak? Dua kali sir, cuma dua kali. Kenapa? The guy with the ponytail, he was in John Wick 3, right? Uh, the the short guy? Yeah. Probably. I don't remember, but probably. I think you you pointed him out to me when we watched the film. Ugh. It just shows you like how people at the top find everyone beneath them so expendable. Yeah. And then people at the bottom are just, you know, they're just clamoring to get a piece of something. Come on, dude. It's not nap time. Uh, he got blasted. I mean, I know. He knocked but out for a second. Still, you can sleep when you survive. You gotta get through this. Why can't he grab his weapon? Is it the noise? Yeah. Okay. Dude, dude, you need to shut the f up. I get it. You're in pain. This isn't the time. Cry later. Cause that. How is that? Any quieter than the gun he could have grabbed. I know. I was like, alright, buddy. What is the plan here? Oh, gosh. I don't know. I thought you've watched this movie already. I, it's been so long. <laughs> I mean, I watched it, like, when it first came out. So, is that, like, ten years ago? Probably, yeah. So, what? Uh, do we have a team going up and a team going down? How he got him up there is amazing. I know. That was, like, some acro yoga stuff. Here they come! They make really good use of the environment in this movie. Yeah. Of like, obscurity and shadows and noises, yeah. like, all the little things. Hey, good. Some of my Indonesians coming back. <laughs> How much do you recognize? Oh, just, just random fragmented yeah. words. I was so young. Like, numbers and... Ikut cukup. Somehow I just find like machete fights to be just so scary and visceral. It just looks, it looks more painful than like a katana. Well, yeah, because it's not as sharp. Exactly. You, you gotta like really hack at people. Yeah. To get them with a machete, like it just feels like it won't gross. be a clean. It won't be a clean cut. Not at all. Yeah. Like it's just it's really nasty. And he's just intimate. Uh, When you know the enemy has guns, I don't understand the notion of, like, giving away your position. I don't know. Because he feels like he's invincible. Some great lighting there. Do they still have guns, though? I wonder... I really wonder how they lit this movie. Yeah. Oh, he's got that Rambo knife! Damn. <laughs> I was like... We're just about to get into the fight. I think we're about to get a really good fight scene here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, is this one that you've done a reaction to? With Megan Lee. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Ugh. 
Oh, okay. That was cool. That was nice. Oh, I like that baton situation. Very good use of your baton. Oh. Whoa. Nice. Oh Whoa. my god. Oh. Oh, oh, your baton. Oh. Why can't you walk? What happened? He's messed up. I thought that was just his ear. Well, obviously it's not just his ear. He's doing it. He's doing a uh, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio with a revenant here. So obviously it's not just his ear. <sighs> oh. Damn. Okay. How are we gonna handle this guy? His voice. Oh god, that brings back memories. Like I remember his voice just not being. As it didn't match his face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever he said. <laughs> you see his face, you're just expecting like this more gravelly voice. How many? Oh, we've got one, dude. Why you would just you threw toss it him? away? Why? Like you've got weapons to spare? He was like, he's it's alright. I'm a lethal weapon. Yeah, he's got them kicks. Yeah. I like his like arm movements. <laughs> Such an <laughs> Asian wife situation. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly what I was thinking. She's like jangan. <laughs> Don't get involved. Jangan buka. Oh well. Wait, you couldn't do that quieter. If they find you in that room, then they'll tattle. Oh, dang. So those guys just had a Darrow escape. I thought that he was going to find them. So now he's coming for them. Lock the door. Dang. This whole building is just like full of secret. All right. Now you just need to shut the F up. Okay. Yeah, look. Shh. God, you really feel like the claustrophobic yeah. feeling of that space. What's he trying to do? He's trying to turn. Oh, look, you see it ripple. <laughs> Damn, he looks crazy. Yeah. Shit. He looks like strung hey. out. Hey. Kalau saya muak, saya menggila. Hmm. Gila means crazy. Oh, that's a great shot. Apa ini? That means what's this? Oh. Why you gotta be like so smart, dude? Hey, that's a TV. I had a feeling that was gonna happen. What are you gonna do? Oh. Dude, you just gotta bust out. You just gotta bust out. You just gotta bust out and like... Yeah, he's got an accent. Which, which one? The, the bad guy? Yeah. I think so. God, it takes a special kind of lens to get that kind of close-up. What are you gonna do? Can you, like, I don't know. Can you wipe the blood off? Mm. Oh, he's wiping it at the same time. Okay. I would still move. I don't know. Is he gonna figure it out? Oh, he hasn't figured it out yet. Don't hurt her. How is this building still holding together? <laughs> God damn. God, what a pussy. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're like He just got his face sliced open and he was still like... Calm about it. That's what martial arts does to you. Where is he injured? That's the Where? question. Where? Okay. Oh. Oh. Ah, yeah. oh. Goodness me. Yucky. 
That's yeah. his poops, isn't it? <laughs> a butter knife? Really? <laughs> uh, yeah, we need that comic relief. <laughs> okay, this is not gonna be nice. Oh lord! Put a rag in his mouth. You know that that's like extremely painful. You don't even see most of it. It's just like you just know. It's like the ideas in your head. Yeah. You know? That's gonna happen. Nice Wait, which shot. one is the mad dog? <laughs> Why? Is he the mad dog? You just why are you killing your own peoples? Are you a spy? Pick up some weapons, dude. I don't know. Maybe your baton. And some of the weapons that you know. Why don't you pick up your weapons? It's a perfectly good knife. It, it is a wonder why he didn't pick up any of those I weapons. I know, I'm like I, maybe I just watched you play too many video games. I'm more like, weapons! Collect! Okay. <laughs> oh! Oh, oh my damn. god. Ugh. It's like a horror film. You just keep going up when you really should try going down. I don't know. Well, I mean, the dude's at the top. Dude. You just took out an entire corridor. You can do this. Oh, he's winded. Well, these guys are probably more um, brutal, right? What are you gonna do? Slide. No. Ah. Who? Oh. Nice. Oh. That was close. Ah! <sighs> what is this guy? Okay. Oh, oh he got him on the take cheek it back, too. Bitch. Yeah. <laughs> How do you like it? <laughs> oh, nice. Ooh. Oh, that was dope. Ah. It's very Jackie Chan. Yeah. Wow. Oh, damn! I remember that. That what was intense. What type of move is that? He got him in the throat in the door. Yucky. Mm. Yeah, I thought that was dope the first time I watched it. <laughs> Frying pan. Let's do it. <laughs> Frying pan. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pot, but I mean, it'll do. It'll be like tangled up in this bitch. Oh, this guy. I guess this thug knows martial arts. Yep. He's doing some kickies. Well, yeah, he was. He he like jumped up at him. Oh, take him out! Take him out! Take him out! Okay, he's like a boxer. Ooh. Oh, brought him down. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hi! Oh, Ooh. dang! Oh! <sighs> uh, strangulation takes too long. You gotta. I wonder if it's deliberate that he feels winded in the fight, or if it's just the fight scene was tiring them out. <laughs> I know, but like. Oh damn! I would just kind of make sure that everyone's dead before you move on. Either way, it worked in its favor, in the movie's favor, because it felt like he was getting tired as the, as the yeah. fight went. Oh, okay. I mean, that's one way to get out of the building. Yeah, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it works. I mean, now you got to jump back in. Ay. It's a movie where people are kicking each other to stay, yeah, to like, stay alive, so it's fun. Move your head from the window. <laughs> move your head from the window. Yes. You gotta get home, dude. You have a wife and a baby. I don't, I don't baby. remember those shots in the original. Or, I mean, maybe it was there, but I don't remember, recall it. Yeah, well, you know, they, like, they gave... They're, they're giving the characters motivation, at least, or they're, they're trying to. Right, no, I like it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I appreciate it. I just don't remember it. it. Oh. <laughs> See? He knows him. Best friend, brother, what? 
Oh, he's in um, Mortal Kombat. Oh, he is? This one? I think he is. I think it's him. Oh, cool. Take your pants off. I know. <laughs> certainly I'm has like, a vibe to it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, certainly. He's like, hey, <laughs> you're handsome. Ooh. Ooh. Dang. Oh, damn, that was That's dope. That's precision. It's very Ken Low. Okay. Still got armored shit. Okay. Oh, oh that's the edge he's got. Yeah. Oh no. Ooh. It's interesting because they've got like different advantages, right? Because police dude Jaka, he's taller. But this guy is like Oh, oh, not the eyes. Or oh, oh, or the nose. Okay. Oh. Oh, dang. Is he going to make it? He's not going to make it, is he? He didn't get him. Save cameras in the rooms? Oh no. What? Someone's gonna lose a finger. Or a hand. I don't know. Mm, okay. So he's not gonna die yet. They properly set that up. Yeah. With the knife. Yeah. Well, like I called it out straight yeah. away. It's like Chekhov's guns. I mean, yeah. they properly set it up. They put the thought in your head. So there was like tension the entire time. Yeah. And also because you, like they set up the bad guy so well because you, you know exactly the type of psycho he is. <laughs> Ow! Oh my lord! And he, and he like went like this afterwards. Uh. Oh jeez. Oh, nice fall. Ow. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Why wouldn't he just stab him? Oh, nice. Huh. Oh, nice. Okay, okay. I mean, he's old. Huh. <laughs> That's helpful. Yeah! Oh gosh! <laughs> On his back. Ugh. It made you. It, it, uh. it elicited an ayah from you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it looks so painful. I feel so bad for the stunt guy sometimes. What? Who's in there? What? What's going on? It might be his brother. Why is it locked from the outside? God damn. Oh, it's that guy. I thought so. Dang, his internal organs, man. <clears throat> no. Get out of here. Save yourself. 
Nope. Don't turn your back on him. Are you crazy? But well, the movie established he's not like that. Maybe use the chains or something. The chains, they've got to come back into the fight. I mean, come on. Right? I don't remember. It's got to be. I, think I mean, I don't know. want you to tell me. I'm just kind of speculating here. Yeah. But, like, chains are a cool weapon. Okay, okay, okay. GTFO, dude. Oh. Two against one. Yeah, he likes this shit. Oh, he lives for it. Oh, he's not in good shape. Oh! Ah! Ah, yeah. oh, god damn! Oh! They're just like... Yeah, they're like, not whatever. Not even concerned with eco-wise not being there behind them. We're on, we're on the 15th floor now. Hiya! I mean, the gun's just going to announce that you're... Okay. Well, they're not very subtle, are they? I mean, I guess he was already screaming, so... Okay, he's also an incredibly good shot. Well, he's been around. Yeah. Clearly. Just shoot him. Shoot him in the leg. I don't know. Yes. We're playing this game. Do you know where this is going? And then he's going to kill... The, the partner. Oh, what move was that? Like, this is a cool fight and all, but I kind of wish that Rama was taking him on by himself. Oh yeah. Ah, oh, oh, what kind of move was that? Whoa. <laughs> what, what, how you, oh, he's one slippery bastard. Oh. Oh god, oh god. No. Oh damn. It's like Tekken. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Woo! Oh, those are your ribs. Yeah, I I thought it would maybe get him on the back and then it'd be game over. <gasps> oh, that was cool. Oh, are they weapons? Can we use them? A little bit of glass in the throat. Ka-chow! No, no. Oh, it's just to have a cool strobe effect. That's what you called it. There we tube go. Light. <clears throat> Death by tube light. Get it. Let's hope you're somewhat. Just get him in, I don't know, in the throat? Yes! Ah! Spurt, spurt, spurt! No, okay. Yes! Damn, he's still fighting. Dang! No, 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 no. Come on, Rama. Save your bro. Save your bro. It's like the end of uh, Tom Young Kun. <laughs> Tony Ja. Just like uh, still going. How come? How come? That's a jugular right there. Did he miss it? <gasps> oh, nice. Oh, ah. damn. Oh. Oh, damn. I know I said I kind of wish that Rama did the fight on his own, but yeah, that finishing move was badass. Like, together. The, the power of brothers. But, yeah. I just kind of wanted him to fight dude alone, because when, when the two of them fight him, it just makes him look too badass, which he really was. <laughs> <gasps> why? Oh, I mean, <laughs> I know why. But <laughs> like, 
How many bullets does he have in that gun? Hubris will get ya. So now what? <clears throat> so now he's the big bad guy? Nothing left to lose. Here we go. Oh, is he gonna kill himself? Well, I think he's out of bullets. I don't know. I you can't remember. So? I can't remember. He's, sh he's shot a lot of bullets. He has, yeah. Oh, wait. Never mind. Oh, oh you're right. Well, okay. You want two young whippersnappers here. Teman -teman, silakan kembali ke kamar masing -masing. Semua sudah selesai. Well, all residents that are left. So will he get leniency now, like the brother, because he helped him? Uh, I don't think? think he's going with them. Oh, okay. I mean, this is his territory. This is his thing, you know? So he'll just take over. I guess so. Gue yakin bisa nyelamatin lu di dunia ini. Keluarin lu. Tapi bisa nggak lo nyelamatin gue di luar sana? Oh, here we go. Well, <laughs> we just finished watching The Raid, the first one. Yeah. Uh, starring Iko Wyas, written, directed by uh, Gareth Evans. Yes. And... Um, and edited by Gareth and, and, Evans, and, and, too. And like, him, yeah. really good job on the editing. Because I feel like in an action film, the editing is so crucial. We're mainly here for Achara's opinion, but I wanted to uh, give my, like, updated opinion. Because I'd seen the movie a long time ago when it was in theaters here. Yeah. And I remember coming out of that film and not loving it. And so I was really excited to come back to this because there's so much love surrounding The Raid and The Raid 2. And I recognize and appreciate the craftsmanship that goes into it. I know yeah. that it's a very, very well-crafted film. But I remember like feeling a little bit frustrated by it, a little bit underwhelmed. And I think it might have had to do with the hype because hype. coming back to it the second time, I'm like, oh, I actually like this a lot more the second time than I did the first time. There's a lot I appreciate about it that I, I didn't appreciate the first go around. However, that being said, there are still things that bother me that are that kind of echo the feelings I had from the first time I, I watched it. And that I ha might have a similar feeling to you, but I'm yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Well, the, in summary, there are moments where the fights don't really tell a story. There are moments where, especially coming off of Hong Kong cinema, like if you watch those fight scenes, like the best Hong Kong cinema fight scenes, they usually tell a story, and you can even see it within something like The Matrix, where you had Yuan Wuping who was doing all the choreography. And so, oftentimes, you'd have fighting, 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 and there it wasn't really going anywhere. It was just like lots of fighting. It's like it just happens and then. And it just ends abruptly without any real arc to the story within the fight. That was my big complaint. And I thought of ways after watching it of how they could have better constructed these things. Me not being a professional film director, I have choreographed fight scenes and whatnot. And so it's sort of like my in my uh, repertoire of things that I do, not to the level that is going on in this movie at all, but... You know, as an outsider, I go, oh, like, they could have done this here, here, and here and made it better. Like, especially the last fight scene with Iko Wyas's brother and uh, Mad Dog. I'm like, it was just, like, his brother being injured, who was being tortured right before the fight. Yeah. It didn't come up in the fight scene. It didn't come up, yeah. Like, very little, yeah. it seemed. Because, like, yeah, in the beginning, it kind of felt, like, both of them felt pretty tired. But he was still really giving it some. Right. You know, considering that he just had the crap beaten out of him right. by Mad Dog, who was, is already established as like a really badass right. fighter. Now, one of my complaints when I first watched The Raid was when they established who Mad Dog was, what he is, yeah. uh, the kind of person he is, that fight went on for a long time. On watching it this time, I couldn't be as engaged because my mom started ringing the doorbell in the middle of it. I'm like trying to text my mom, like, stop it! <laughs> like in the middle of the fight, I'm like, damn it, why now? And so, uh, but my my feeling while watching it the first time, and then you can tell me your feelings like in your uh, spiel. Uh, like my feeling in watching it the first time was like, why did that go on for so long? If he's such a 
dangerous guy. Like what I would have loved is if they established this dude is so dangerous, he took out guy he took out the guy in like in less than a minute. Like what they established Where's the fun in that? Well, exactly. They what they <laughs> well, let me let me clarify my point. So what they established was he in he he like really in, enjoys and gets yeah. off on the the clashing of the fists, right? Off of fighting. He loves that. But what I felt like I needed was to establish that he is so deadly. He'll take you out in like four moves, right? Or not necessarily with that actor or that character, rather, but like kind of like Jet Li in Lethal Weapon Four. Not as anywhere near as good as this movie, but like they established, Jet Li is super dangerous. He can take you out quick, yeah. and so when he's up against Mel Gibson and uh, Merton Riggs, it's like it's really scary. And so likewise here, I wanted that same sort of fear. And when he's fighting Eco Wyatt and his brother, it's like. I feel like I, they've got a chance because it took them forever to beat that guy the first time around. And so, you know what I'm saying? Well, I don't, I mean, I, I think it was already established that he was a badass just from what other characters said about him from the beginning. Like they established him as this guy who's like super sadistic and just wants to get in a fight and will just kill for fun. Right, right, right. You know, no, so like- yeah, that, I, that was more clear to me this time around. Yeah, yeah, like I had no qualms that this guy was someone that you didn't want to mess with. And even in the fight with, uh, the sergeant it was clear that he was the better fighter you know or right. like in that case because because sergeant was I mean he was pretty tired or injured right. or, or whatever maybe he wasn't injured but he was he was taking some hits and mm -hmm. it was to me at least it seemed like Mad Dog was just having a really good time right and so in the final fight between Mad Dog Ego Wise and his brother I just wanted to see some story elements, some breathing elements of like pauses in between of them like kind of looking at each other, timing, like thinking, like trying to have a strategy of some kind as opposed to just clash, 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 fights over, you know? And there were some dope things, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like there was some, throughout this movie, there was amazing stuff. It's just that sometimes things went on for a while. There were moments in fight scenes where you had stunt guys and whatnot who just looked Sam Lay's favorite phrase is like they looked like they had, they had egg on the face, face right yeah. where it's just like they're waiting a little bit and, and, and things were like oh I'm gonna stab you and put the knife in like it just it didn't feel like it was a real fight sometimes it felt like there was choreography and practice almost like not anywhere near as bad as what I'm about to mention but like that fight scene in Tenet when uh, what's his name is fighting himself yes uh, 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 John, David John David Washington John David Washington's fighting himself it looked like a rehearsal yeah. there were moments in here where it looked like a rehearsal and there were moments where the fight scenes were stellar yes. and so again I came away appreciating it so much more than I did the first time there was so much more here for that I found uh, I had positive feelings about but there were still moments I was a lot of moments where I was like oh god like if, you know but it's a whole movie of fighting so you have to be forgiving of moments moments where it's like it just felt like this it felt like a rehearsal you know yeah, I mean I, I would say for me and and I'm coming at this as someone who's a bit of like a layman or a mm -hmm. lay person and I don't have as much experience with actual martial arts as you I think I only kind of noticed that rehearsal feeling or egg on the face maybe about 10% of the time for me 90% of the time I thought that the fight scenes were really cool they were super visceral I liked the way like the camera moved and, and the shots that they were getting and a lot of the choreography and, and moves that they were doing in the fights I hadn't seen before and mm -hmm. so me it, it so, so for me it felt super fresh although there were definitely moments where it really felt like a dance and like fight choreography is kind of like a dance anyway because it is a form of choreography right but there were moments where I was like oh yeah this this is super cool. Like they're going back and forth and it's like very, you know, precise and, and just awesome to watch. But I couldn't help but think, yeah, this this very much feels like a choreography or a, a right. dance, right? Yeah. You said that the movie is just like a fight movie, right? Like yeah. it's a whole one big long fight. At a certain point. Yeah. yeah, at a certain point. And what I really liked about it was even though that it's well aware that it is a movie about action and fighting and it certainly delivers that 100%, I appreciated that at least they took the time to develop the characters, like the main characters. You knew exactly who they were. You knew that Rama had a wife and she was pregnant and that, and that was his motivation. And it was super interesting when you got, get that twist of, oh, wait, 
you know, they know each other. How do they know each other? Oh, it's his brother. You know, just like the different character motivations. The sergeant is someone who's very much like noble and by the book. And you know that Mad Dog is like crazy. I love that they set up all these characters and their and their motivations really well. And not always just by telling you, but also by showing you because like even just by watching you know the way Iko Uwais's character Rama like interacted with the uh, tenant who was trying to get stuff to his wife like you kind of got a sense that oh this guy understands the people Mm -hmm. so I I already had it in my head that like okay he's familiar with this world somehow Mm -hmm. like he's somehow connected and I, I loved all the stuff where they kind of you know dropped hints and for me, it's super fun when I, I see something and I'm like, oh, is this going to happen? And yeah. then like trying to figure it out. I thought that they paid off um, things in, yeah. in the film really, really well. So I really enjoyed it. But I think I do agree with your initial assessment um, when you told me your feelings about the film ages ago, which is that at a certain point, and I know, I know you said it here as well, it does kind of feel a little bit tiring as much as I enjoyed the action and it was so cool and unique and so very well done uh, about three quarters of the way into the film I was like I don't know how much more of this like fighting I can take like it's it's a lot to I, just kind of be like pow, 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 yeah pow, I think I think on the first viewing it's harder because in the second viewing, I actually enjoyed it m- more all the way through. Because right. the first viewing, when they got to that scene where where the um, where the cocaine was all over the table and stuff like yeah. that, and like Eco Weiss was running on the table, and that guy ran towards him, which was senseless. I'm like, but why? It's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? It's my mind goes in a couple of dis- different directions because. Okay, you're watching a kung fu movie, basically, right? I know yeah. it's not kung fu; it's its Indonesian martial arts style. But let's just, for the sake of, so it's uh, it's basically watching a kung fu movie. Yeah. And so you have to sort of accept the conceit that th- you're here for the fight scenes. Yes. But that being said, they've established it's like two different movies in a way because that first act establishes a real movie, a real scene, yes, scenario, uh, um, a setting. Right, and so you have the stakes are high, and it's really, really scary. You got all these things in place, all these chess pieces, so to speak. And so when you have that, and then it turns into a kung fu film, it's just a little bit jarring. Even on my second viewing, I'm like, oh no! But like, what they established was just, and it stays there throughout the film in in ways where they've established like this really intense, what felt like a horror movie. Yeah, you know, like really, really scary stuff. Great camera angles, great lighting, great character development, like you're saying. And I just kind of, I kind of wanted that weave through the film a little bit more it seemed like everybody in the movie knew martial arts like they all went to the same school right as opposed to school of hard knocks yeah as as opposed to you have Iko Awais who knows martial arts you've got Mad Dog who who knows martial arts and a couple of handful of other characters who are specific while most people are just thugs and I feel like should fight as thugs and not as martial artists. Gotcha. Okay. And, and yeah. so that's what sort of throws me when I'm watching and when I'm watching guys do like moves and whatnot I'm like how would you know that you don't you didn't spend your... The streets you, are mean, yeah, okay? You, you didn't spend decades like de- crafting your body like Iko Awais did. And so it's just a little bit confusing based on the first act, which was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it was a fantastic... I remember that the first time I watched this film. The first act up to that first shot by the um, older guy, the older cop guy who turned out to be bad. Yeah. Um, like that first shot... I remember in the, in the theater, like my feeling watching the watching the film, I'm like, God, this is like intense and it's really, really well done. And because of like the barrage of fight scenes that I wasn't ready for, like I knew it was a martial arts film. I just didn't know the fight scenes were going to go on forever sometimes. And that, that like really kind of took me out of it on my first viewing because I'm aware of what I'm walking into this time around. I'm like, oh, okay, I can appreciate it more. You know, it's almost like a Strokes album. <laughs> like, you got <laughs> yeah, to listen to it a couple of times. Listens, you know, yeah. and and so I, I came out of this appreciating it much, much more. Like I said, um, between all the th- aforementioned, but like I still came out of it going, oh, I st- I still wish they found a way to better construct some of these these fight scenes. Um, maybe the Mad Dog fight didn't need to be like super quick with the guy he beats up who's going to be in Mortal Kombat, right? The sergeant. The sergeant. Yeah. Like he he's toying. He's like a dog toying with his food. I get that. Yeah. That that makes sense. Let's let's leave that be. The second fight scene with the brother. One of the things you said was I wish that it was just Eco Wise and Mad Dog. Yeah. And 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 they could have sort of 
done that where the brother's just like messed up. He's yeah. He can't do a whole lot in the fight scene. And so he's doing what he can, but really he's about as good as the guy that was around Eco Wise's shoulders uh, in the, the first time we see Eco Wise fight. Yeah, no, I mean, or or they could have just made it so that in the beginning he's trying to help and then he just kind of gets sidelined because yeah. he's not helpful at all. But then yeah. I really liked what they did at the very end where they came together to take out Mad Dog. I yeah. thought that was really cool. If they could have incorporated that to end the fight, like somehow his brother finds like one last burst of adrenaline yeah. to to help his kid brother out or whatever and that ends it, I would have been like, yeah, awesome. Because it, to me, it just felt like, damn, they're, they're making out Mad Dog to be this like super badass which is fine I guess because he is he's like the the baddest badass right, of all right. but he's so strong that it takes two of them to take him out and I felt like that kind of undermined Rama as a hero because I wanted to see him do the hero thing and like take him out I don't know maybe that's too it's traditional interesting. it's interesting that that's uh, the direction your sentence went because I was ex I was coming from the opposite side I felt like they undermined Mad Dog by having them both be at 100% life you know, oh. you see what I'm saying? The thing about it is, Iko Uwais, it should be an impossible task with your main character. Like, how the hell is he going to get out of this, right? Because what we, what I needed to see for, for any movie, really, it's like, okay, your main villain is up against an impossible task. It, it, the odds are stacked against him. How will he get out of this? Right. right? And so we've established that Eco Wise is a badass. But like the reason why I wanted that fight scene with um, I guess he's playing uh, Sub Zero in Mortal Kombat. If I'm not mistaken, I apologize if I got that wrong. But uh, when Mad Dog's fighting the Sub Zero actor, it goes on for a while. As I recall, I'm like, I, I, like I said, I sort of checked out because my mom was bugging. If that fight was shorter. Or if we see him go against multiple guys after that, where it's just like, ka, 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 and just knocks them out. It's like, this dude is so deadly with his hands. We know that Eco Wise is in for a world of hurt when he's up against him. Like, I wanted that kind of thing established, right? right. And so once we have them together, we're scared for Eco Wise. We're like, how's he going to... Like, we know Eco Wise is a badass, but how is he going to stand up against Mad Dog? But see, that that's why I wanted him to stand up against him alone, because to have... I guess to have him have most of that victory to be like, oh, I right. did it. You right, know? right. Because they did a really good job. The thing that you always talk about when, when we watch action is like you love the John McClane effect, which is right. like the the hero, the main character, the protagonist that we're following through the story. You know, he gets knocked down and those hits affect him, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. like you you get the sense that Rama is tired and in some of the fights we watch it's like oh yeah he really looks tired and he's just like oh dang right. you know like still trying he's still trying yeah and I still got that sense in in that last fight with Mad Dog I just wanted him to kind of be tired and you know take him out mostly on his own you wanted it to be more like Daredevil yeah which, like heroic you know, yeah like, come on no that's certainly what I felt while watching the hallway fight in Daredevil season one episode two is you felt him getting tired through the fight and he's still like moving forward and fighting these guys with what he's got left in yeah. him. Certainly, like I would have liked to have seen that because it seemed like they were at like a hundred all the way through the fight until it stopped. <laughs> and that's not how you want this to go. You want to see them both getting exhausted. Uh, kind of like a great example of that would be uh, Wheels on Meals, Jackie Chan versus Benny the Jet, uh, where th the fight's happening and like they're both getting kind of tired as the fight moves forward and Jackie Chan has to be strategic with how he approaches this guy because Benny the Jet is so badass. Right. And so I wanted to see little character moments like that because we had so few in the final fight. There was only one that I can recall, which is when Mad Dog tripped over Eco Weiss's brother and you see Eco Weiss's brother go, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, goes I for that him. Moment. Like that was yeah. the only moment like that. It's like, no, but we needed more of that because that's what made it work so well throughout the rest of the movie. Like there's a lot of character stuff in other parts of the film that made it so exciting and visceral that it was missing in that final fight. All that being said, like I thought that uh, they had a really good bad guy in this movie, yep. even though we didn't have a final, we didn't have a fight between Eco Weiss and the boss because it's just like, what's that gonna do? Really? Yeah, I mean, he, yeah. he can kick the boss's ass. Yeah. That's, that's not the point. But the 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 actor playing the boss, I thought did a really really good job. Yeah, he was really like, good. He was really um, he had he hit all the notes. He was intimidating yeah. and, and like menacing. Exactly. Yeah. And like he had his. Um, 
in terms of acting and performance. Like he he had his rises when he needed to rise like in, in terms of like volume and whatnot it, it felt like it was warranted it felt like uh i liked his performance a lot is the short of it the the brother eco weiss's brother I had, I had mixed feelings about with his performance i thought like there were instances where it worked and instances where i'm like ah you, it's just like it didn't quite but eco weiss i thought was strong throughout the film you know yeah, from I, the I, beginning to the end i really liked him yeah. i mean i think if i'm being honest i preferred his performance more in every single scene except for the scene with his wife <laughs> just because I, I for, for whatever reason I wasn't superly buying that relationship with them but it was such a short scene that I can just kind of overlook it and go the rest of the time his his performance was like so strong for me yeah I, I really really liked it like not just in terms of him being an amazing martial artist mm -hmm. which he is but also just as an actor in his own right I was like yeah yeah digging it yeah yeah I mean <laughs> The, the the film gives him two objectives. Number one is he's trying to get his brother out of there. And number two, he's trying to get back to his wife. Yeah, and, and he's trying to save his friends. But, he's trying to save, yeah. I mean, he only manages to save one. But The second time around just really told me how well constructed this was as a movie. It really has a lot going on. There's a lot of depth in the story and yeah. the characters. The music is questionable. Like I wish that we actually watched this with the Lincoln Park music just so I could hear the difference. But to be fair, I don't. I didn't remember yeah. this until I watched it just now. They're like the mu There were moments where the music was working really well, and then they went for like some kind of Rage Against the Machine thing at the end, like where Neo yeah. goes into the sky. Yeah. Um, but anyway, the music was hit and miss for me. Uh, I am curious now about the Lincoln Park edition, just to see. Well, it's not Lincoln Park, is it? It's Mike Shinoda, but uh, yeah, it's, it said it was Lincoln Park, or Mike. I guess it's Mike Shinoda from Lincoln yeah, Park. Yeah, exactly. So, um, uh, so, but like, I just enjoyed a lot of the filmmaking stuff. Yeah, like the sound design yeah. was super good as well. Like from from the very beginning with the the ticking of of the clock and that, the punching that bag. you get and the punching bag, yeah. like that that kind of shocked me because I wasn't expecting that sound with the. Pop, 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 I don't. They just did a really great job with with the foley. And, the sound design, and yeah. the sound design yeah. overall because it just made the fight seem that much more visceral because they got the sound spot on. Right. Yeah. This is a film I would actually, for more than the fight scenes, I would actually revisit for the filmmaking stuff. Yeah. Um, even though it's mostly fight scenes, there's like little nuanced, like I get, like we said a couple of times now, like that felt like a horror movie, but yeah. that, it created just tension. There was a lot of stuff that created tension in the movie that I really appreciated. Uh, uh, and, and so, what? I was just going to um, point out that amazing scene where he's hiding in the wall with his friend. Yeah, exactly. And like, yeah, that the tension in that scene. And I'd never seen something like that where like he gets his face sliced yeah. and he has to stay completely still and then wipe the blood right. off the blade so he doesn't get discovered. I was like, this is crazy. I was like yeah. losing my mind. Yeah. I actually enjoyed all that stuff more than I enjoyed the fight scenes overall. Yeah. Like I enjoyed the the story and tension aspects of the film more than the fight scenes themselves. Don't get me wrong, a lot of cool stuff in the fight scenes, but having watched a lot of fight scenes, I'm like, there was cool there was cool character nuances in the fight. I just wish they emphasized it more. And so what I'm left with is enjoying the other stuff more, if that makes any sense. Sure. You know? Yeah. And like I also I really appreciate that as a story, as a film, yeah. it's so cool because I don't know what the budget was, but I don't imagine that it, it's like huge Bolly up uh, the Bollywood. I don't imagine it's like huge Hollywood style mm -hmm. budget. Oh, Bollywood or Hollywood, yeah. Right. So I just really appreciate things when when uh, writer directors get creative and go, okay, we're gonna set it in this one location. Yeah. And I mean, it's so cool that they got an entire building, mm -hmm. and it's like, how do we make use of this how do we build the tension and how do we make it visceral and exciting and i think they they really succeeded on all fronts yeah um i think that for me this is sort of jumping the gun a little bit but uh, i think that i like this more than the raid 2 uh i have often said that my favorite fight scene i can't say it actually because you haven't seen the raid 2 yet so oh, what after you watch one. The, yeah after you watch the raid 2 no it's, it's after not. you watch the raid 2 I will. I'll tell you which is my favorite fight scene out of the two films. Okay. Um, because even watching it here, I'm like, there was a lot of cool stuff, but nothing jumped out at me as like, oh, I got to go back to that again. It's like there were moments in the fight scenes where I was like, oh my god, that's cool. Like there was like the a moment early. I think it was with Mad Dog where there was like this Ken Lo type thing. Ken Lo is from. Um, yeah, it was Mad Dog. 
He's from Junkin Master 2. He plays this guy that Jackie is very formidable for Jackie Chan. It's this long ass fight at the end of the movie between Jackie Chan and Ken Lo, and it's amazing. Uh-huh. And Ken Lo is like this super kicker. And so there's a moment where Mad Dog does like a hot, hot, like with yeah, his foot. Yeah, I, I love those. And I'm like, how are you doing that? <laughs> so <laughs> um, it's a Ken Lo kind of thing because Ken Lo had that kind of control with his legs. That's, that's what like jumped out at me. And so, okay, that's a great example. Like you go back and watch Drunken Master 2, uh, or as it's known in the States, The Legend of Drunken Master. And there is a story that you can identify without any like martial arts experience. You can see the story going on in the fight scene, and that's what makes that such a classic. And that's what was missing from the raid. That story is so important. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that it's all there. It's like all the all the tools are there to make the thing. And it, it that's what makes it so disappointing and frustrating for someone like me, where I'm like, oh, but you had it. And if you just, you just little thing here, little like little blood over here, pull this thing here, and it's like it's right there, yeah. you know. That's what that's what's so frustrating for someone like me because it's like I'm rooting for it on a level that is different from someone who doesn't know any martial arts or has no experience with fight scenes. Like I'm coming at it from a different uh, perspective, almost like, um, yeah, that's it. That's that's, that's all I'm gonna say. Well, so, I, I think it's like it's the same anytime you're making a film or a, a piece of theater or, or whatever. I feel like whether it's a fight scene, a dance or a song, it has to move the story forward somehow. Like, right. you can still appreciate it for being beautiful or well done, but I feel like it, to make something truly amazing, transcendent, beautiful, whatever, it, it needs to have that story element as well. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I think we beat this horse to death. Uh, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Hopefully you enjoyed that watch along and this discussion. And so um, I'm going to try to get Achara to watch Raid 2 later this week whoop, whoop. so that uh, it's back to back so you can really compare the two. And, you know, I think that'd be a, a great thing to do. Thanks so much. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I'm Jabby Kawai. This is Achara Kirk. Peace out.